Hello, um, this is Moose. He's with me today, uh, as he is every day. He's not on my lap uh, today. Uh, my name is Reverend Dr. May Elise Cannon. Today uh, is March 15th. Friday, March 15th. Today is the 161st day uh, since October 7th. Today, a Gaza aid ship from Lanarca, Cyprus, offloaded its first load of food. Um, the renowned Spanish-American chef Jose Andres said that two crates have been delivered with many more to go. Um, the, um, it's, uh, the group is expected to deliver 37 million meals to Gaza, where um, the vast majority of the population, of course, has been forcefully displaced. Uh, so that was significant today. The U.S. Central Command has conducted its 11th aid drop into Gaza uh, it put out a statement today saying that they dropped 35,700 meals that are ready to eat, 31,800 bottles of water into northern Gaza, of course, which is the area of greatest need for civilian access to critical aid. The ICJ said it would hold hearings next month on Nicaragua's case against Germany for providing weapons to Israel and defunding UNRWA, according to Reuters. According to Nicaragua, Germany is violating the 1948 Genocide Conventions and the 1949 Conventions surrounding the laws of war in Gaza, where Israeli forces have killed more than 30,000 Palestinians um, since October. I mentioned this yesterday. Um, the U.S. President Joe Biden said that the Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer made a good speech on Thursday. So I was talking about Schumer's speech where he called for new Israeli elections and criticized Prime Minister Netanyahu. And Biden responded and said he made a good speech and added he expressed serious concerns shared not only by him, but by many Americans. The U.S. Um, needs to see a clear and implementable plan in Rafah, including how to get civilians out of harm's way, U.S. Secretary of State Blinken said today, according to Reuters. Um, his comments came after Netanyahu's office approved plans. They said uh, that it approved plans for an invasion into Rafah. Um, they told reporter, reporters that the U.S. has not yet seen those plans. Now, we have heard um, from some experts that they don't believe there is any possible way because there are so many people and that the area is so small to safely uh, remove people out of Rafa um, in order to be able to have you know, a full scale ground invasion. Uh, but the U.S. Um, you know, needs to see a clear and implementable plan. Um, and so, you know, that's something that's been going back and forth about, you know, what is the U.S.'s perspective on this? Um, you know, we had heard that Biden might put a hold on weapons, um, you know, if this invasion, you know, proceeded. And so um, really mixed messages are being communicated. Um, Netanyahu rejected the latest proposal by Hamas for a truce and the release of Israeli hostages in exchange for Palestinian prisoners, saying that the demands are still absurd. Uh, we can assume that that may be because they have been consistent in saying that they would only release hostages if an end to the war is in sight, and if there are assurances that Gazans would be allowed to return to North Gaza. Um, however, Netanyahu said he would send Israeli delegates to Qatar to continue truce efforts once the security cabinet discusses the Israeli position. A senior Hamas official, Abu Zori, told Reuters that Israel's rejected, rejection of its latest truce counterproposal showed that Netanyahu was determined to pursue the aggression against our people and undermine all efforts exerted to reach a ceasefire agreement. German Chancellor Schultz is due to travel to Jordan and Israel over the weekend to lobby for more aid to be delivered to Gaza, according to a German spokesperson. And protests have been held in Dublin and Belfast, urging President Biden to demand a permanent ceasefire in the Middle East. I was wondering why that is. It is because the Irish premier um, will be meeting with President Biden at the White House. Um, that uh, visit uh, was supposed to happen today as a part of a traditional St. Patrick's Day visit. Um, as of today, at least 31,490 Palestinians have been killed in Gaza, 73,439 Palestinians injured. Um, and a nonprofit in Israel that's called the Commanders for Israel's Security issued a statement today. And they are saying this is the bottom line. The damage caused um, by the policy of um, humanitarian stinginess, like that of outrageous statements of irresponsible ministers and MKs, undermines the foundations of security and diplomatic support for Israel emanating from capitals that are the most important for our security. They said this, we urge you all to restrain the extremist firebrands, prioritize Israel's security and strategic interests over coalition considerations, and urgently lead extensive humanitarian aid efforts. Before the Israeli Defense Forces' freedom to operate in the Strip, Israel's freedom to shape the Strip's future, and our relations with the U.S., Arab peace partners, Europe, and the international community suffer irreparable damage. I just thought that was interesting. You know, um, these are retired officials from the Israeli establishment, and they're saying that the way um, the Israeli um, authorities 
uh, and government, you know, are governing um, is causing irreparable or could cause irreparable damage. As we head into the weekend, continue to pray for peace, keep in thought in mind, you know, all of those around the world who are advocating for a comprehensive ceasefire, who are walking on Gaza ceasefire pilgrimages, you know, all of those who are involved in, you know, vigils or protests for peace. If you are protesting, I'd invite you to take a look at some of the convictions, you know, that we put on the Gaza ceasefire pilgrimages page. Um, one of them is this. It says, we take a stand against any form of hatred, including anti-Semitism and Islamophobia. We hurt the movement and we're not faithful to Jesus when hatred of anyone or any people clouds the clarity of naming the war crimes being committed by the modern nation state of Israel. Um, you know, and also Hamas, of course. Hatred, be it racism um, or some other dehumanizing practice, also hurts the much needed collaboration essential to end this horror. We are clear that our battle is not against flesh and blood, but against the powers responsible. If hatred animates your analysis or activism, we are not the movement for you. And so might God, you know, remove any hatred from our hearts and might we be compelled by love to continue to pursue peace.